people ask me when I started, you know, how I get involved in martial arts and everything. I was born and raised in New Orleans and uh, played a lot of sports. I always got into contact sports, football, wrestling, boxing, you know, I used to race dirt bikes, you know, fun stuff like that. Well, you know, grew up in New Orleans in the 60s and the 70s, you basically had to learn how to fight. So, uh, with box and stuff like that, you know, do normal wrestling and stuff like that. And I had a friend of mine came by, was doing judo, Japanese judo. I was probably 13 years old at the time. And, uh, you know, I kind of watched him work out a little bit, kind of inched me a little bit. So I got him to teach me a little bit. We started doing judo. And uh, I was a little bitty skinny kid. So I didn't really like it much, you know, it would throw me in my little skinny butt all over the place and stuff, so. We had a guy come in one night, was a, you know, wushu master, kung fu master, as you call it, and uh, watched this guy do kicks, man, it was just awesome. So I figured, you know, maybe, man, that looked pretty cool, maybe I'll try to do something like that. So I took a couple of classes and everything, and then we, uh, my dad and my family decided to move to Baton Rouge. So that kind of ended that. We came to Baton Rouge and stuff, and uh, you know, I went to Bel Air High School when I was a sophomore and a junior, played football, stuff like that, still raced motorcycles. Well, you know, that time you're growing up in the 70s, man, part of like fighting in the schoolyard and fighting in the park, that was all part of growing up in America. Well, you could fight, get your butt whipped, or you could learn how to fight and do the butt whipping, so. Had a guy at a karate school here in town. A couple of guys trained under him, you know, watch him and everything kind of interests me. Well, in 1977, I met this guy, Greg Walters from Boulder, Colorado. He was a karate guy, kickboxing guy. Started working out with him a little bit and uh, started to learn a little bit. And uh, after about a year and a half or so, you know, Greg moved on. So I just started training on my own as much as possible. And the summer before I went to my my senior year of high school, that summer I met a guy who was a, uh, a Sifu, you know, wushu master, kung fu master, a guy named Jamie Dale Harrison. Real great guy, real popular guy here in Baton Rouge. Well, I'll tell you exactly uh, the story how I met Jimmy. Uh, he was like the, you know, when we was in high school, everybody wanted to be a badass. And uh, Jimmy was a little older than me. He was like the, uh, he was a local badass at Woodlawn High School in the 70s. Kung Fu guy, everybody talked how, you know, a bit of a fighter, this, that, and other thing. When I moved over there, I had a little attitude. I was a really cocky, smart-ass little guy. Well, I thought I was the baddest guy around. So we met one day, and I was on campus. I was walking to a class one day, and Jimmy came up with another friend of ours and introduced himself. And, you know, oh, I heard you're Russell Jones. You're like the baddest dude at Bel Air High School. I said, well, I don't know about all that kind of stuff, but I can take care of myself, you know? Well, he introduced himself. See, he knew my brother. You knew one of my younger brothers said that uh, I might be interested in taking these kung fu classes and stuff, you know. And I was a really smart ass little guy. I said, man, screw you and your kung fu. You try to crap on me, I'll slap the crap out of you. So, you know, a guy just smiled at me, invited me to a class. Said, oh, if you change your mind, you ought to come in. So, actually, it was a Wednesday uh, many years ago. So we parted, and uh, that day in school, oh, the rumor got around, I'm going to fight this guy, Jimmy Harrison. Well, I copped a little attitude and told everybody I was going to go over there that afternoon to his gym or his little school, and I was going to show everybody what as bad or tough as everybody thought he was. Boy, was I wrong. Uh, that afternoon, we got out of school. And a good friend of mine, David Beeson, and I, we drove over. David David grew up with you know, Mr. Harrison real well. Seafood Harrison is what we called him. Well, we go over to the guy's house. He lived over there in Avalon subdivision here in Baton Rouge off of Millerville Road. Well, we walk in, and uh, he had to kind of walk through his house. He trained in his backyard. Well, as I walk into the backyard, I hear some hollering, screaming and stuff. 
I look outside, there's a guy squatting on the roof of his house with a board in his hand. And this guy Harrison's jumping up and down, doing like what we call jump flying front kick, snapping the boards in half. Well, I looked at my buddy Dave, I said, man, Beeson, I think I screwed up this time. This guy, <laughs> this guy knows what the heck's going on. Well, uh... I walked in the yard, he saw me. Oh man, glad you made it. Real nice fella. Uh, so I walked in, he invited me, and we did the training. It was unbelievable. Uh, this guy was like a superhuman to me. So we did a little three or four hour workout. In those days, it is not like a gym today where you go in for an hour. In the old days, you went in and you left when you couldn't walk no more. Okay? Well, we did a little three, four hour workout, and after the workout, he came up to me. He says, What do you think? And uh, I told him, Look, man, uh, I'm really going to apologize to you. Uh, I came over here to kind of whip your ass. And man, I tell you what, I'm glad I didn't try. I said, if you'll uh, excuse my stupidity and my ignorance and my attitude, yeah, I'd like to train with you. So uh, that was it. Uh, Jimmy, uh, yep, I'm going to be uh, my next fighter. So that's when I signed up with uh, my first style, Kung Fu, Chen Yin Kung Fu. And uh, really unique in the old days, the way it's trained today. You know, we had, you had competitions you could go to. Uh, and, you know, practice, test your fighting skills, I won't, you know, see for Harrison didn't believe in that. He believed in real fighting. And what we would do, we'd go to your local drinking establishment, your local ballroom in the 70s, and uh, well, that's how you sparred. Believe it or not, the first time it happened to me, we, went, uh, we used to go across the river in the old days. After all the bars closed in Baton Rouge, we'd go across the river in the 70s and 80s and party over there. But one night, he says, we're going over across the river and party. So when we went out, you know, we get over there. Kind of like a biker type ad. A lot of bikers ran Baton Rouge in the old days. The banditos, the sun, stuff like that. A lot of them hung around over there. Well, a couple guys walked by, pretty big fellas. I was about 140 pounds in them days. Uh, Jimmy says, oh, that's the guy you fighting that guy tonight. I said, Dude, what? He says, well, this is your first test of your Kung Fu skills that I've been teaching you. You're going to fight this guy. You're going to whip his ass. You don't train with me no more. That was basically exactly what he told me. So uh, within a few minutes, well... Uh, I fought this guy, and, uh, you know, what I trained paid off, you know, basically whipped his ass, and uh, we left, and that was kind of like my first idea of uh, tournament fighting, <laughs> we didn't tournament fight, went out and fought real fighters, and stuff on the street, and stuff like that, but, uh, Jimmy, uh, Joined the 80s, uh, the Army, who's in 82nd Airborne in the uh, early 80s. A lot of stuff going on in Beirut, Lebanon, stuff like that. Well, he was Special Forces. Well, he went, uh, kind of took off, you know. Well, while he was gone, I definitely didn't stop training. I continued my training. And in the old days, when I used to uh, go out to Forest Park in the 70s, we used to hang around all the Breck Parks here in Baton Rouge, really safe. Wasn't all the crime or the crazy stuff you see today, but I go out there seven days a week and train. And uh, I was out there training one day, and some friends of mine came by, told me how they met this guy. It was a grandmaster, supreme grandmaster in karate, a tenth degree black belt. And I really didn't think there was nobody in the country with that rank in our country. So I wanted, you know, my attitude. I was a pretty cocky guy. Always wanted to test my skills. Well, I told these people, I said, no, this guy's he's pulling y'all's leg. There's no way this guy can uh, be 10th degree black belt, you know, and not in uh, our country. So in old days also, another thing was different in my day. You didn't just go to a karate school and sign up. You had to be invited. 
bought a Masters in the old days. 40 seconds out. Through a, you know, a, 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 a student they might have that was a friend of yours, a mutual friend, uh, would maybe tell a Master about you, and he would give you an opportunity, he would give you a chance. And what you would do, he would uh, select a group of people and would all go to a an orientation type thing where we'd get to know him and explain, you know, everything to us. Well, they set up one of these and I was invited and I went out there and uh, I was really uh, experienced. In those days, this was uh, 1979, Grandmaster Marks taught in his apartment <laughs> over there behind uh, LSU. He lived over in apartments around LSU. And uh, we all went over there one afternoon for an orientation, a handful of us, and uh, we walked in. And we went to the door. A couple of his black belts answered the door. It's, uh, I don't remember exactly who they were. Uh, third degree black belt, Linda McCoy. Second degree black belt, John Ayer. Invited us in, welcomed us in to the dojo and uh, we sat down and they explained a few things to us and everything. All of a sudden this guy comes out and I guess he's about Soka had to be about we call him Soka. Uh, probably had to be about 48 years old I guess 48, 49 years old and uh, came out all dressed up in the traditional garb. He had the traditional OB. The